do that. Ha <laughs> ha. Ten minutes. Nine minutes. Eight minutes. Seven minutes.
Three minutes. two minutes. One minute. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. I'm getting all tangled up here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to church. Welcome to First Pres. Um, we are gathered here really to honor Jesus Christ, to give him the glory that's due his name. And so we um, 
let's turn our hearts and, and uh, our minds and focus on him. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for gathering us here in this building and here in spirit. We thank you, Lord, for all your blessings this week. Help us to recall the ways that you have been with us and help us to return with thanks and praise. So bless this time. Fill up your presence and your spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand, sit, hand stands if you like. Let us worship the Lord together. Wonderful, so wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross has spoken mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart could fully know. How glorious, how So powerful, your glory fills the skies, your mighty works displayed for all to see. The beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to sing.
May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please turn and greet your neighbors. Everyone online, drop a like, leave a comment. All right, I think it's time for ping. Ping. Hey, kids. Hi, Pastor Mark. Hi there, Ping. You look like you're in a familiar place. Yeah, remember a few weeks ago, I went to a pond. That's right, and you were intimidated by a frog and a toad. Yeah. They were kind of mean. I had to run for my life. Why then are you back there, Ping? Well, Jesus tells us to love our enemies and bless those who curse you. That's true. So how are you going to love your froggy friends? Well, frogs like worms. So I got this giant worm to give to them. Um, Ping, that's not a worm. It's a snake. Eek! A snake! What do I do? Oh no, it's too late. The frog comes. Hey, you, panda. I thought I told you to beat it. You, you, you did, but I want to stop by and give you a treat I thought you would like. Really? What is it? Um, sorry, but it's a snake. I thought it was a worm. I know that snakes usually eat frogs, so so I'll leave now. Wait, how did you know that we like snakes? We frogs in this pond are tough, and we eat snakes for breakfast. Really? Well, there you go then. I'll be on my way. Well, I suppose you could stay for a short bit. Not too long. And and don't let the other pandas come and mess up our ponds. Well, that's very kind of you. I won't linger too long, and I'll keep this place a secret from the rest of my panda friends. Thanks for the snake, panda ribbit. Boy, that turned out better than I thought. Looks like being kind is the way to go. Jesus said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So if you want to be treated with kindness, then we should treat others kindly too. That's a good lesson for us to learn. So what are you going to do next, Ping? Hmm, maybe that guy from last week. I think we got off on the wrong foot. He might need someone to be kind to him now that Russell Wilson got injured. I'll see you next week, kids. All right? Bye! Bye, Ping. Sometimes it's scary to go to your enemies and be kind to them, but Jesus tells us to you know, do unto others as you would have them do to you. And uh, if you want to be people to be kind to you, uh, we should be extending love and kindness to others. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that you fill us with love and kindness, and you put people in our lives to share that love and kindness and to show your, your grace, and so we give you thanks, and we pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen, amen. Today is Mr. Caden's turn in back, and so kids can follow, follow him. Well, good morning, everyone. We're getting middle of October. It's crazy to think we're in October, and it's almost, well, we're past the midpoint. There are some cool things that are happening in the next few weeks. 
uh, pumpkin carving at crosswalk is on the 27th and so the kids will be able to uh, make a mess with the gooey insides and carve pumpkins and be creative and that's always fun we're having trunk or treat on the 31st from uh, five to seven uh, we're uh, having signups for trunks and candy uh, the signups are in the coffee hour room on the bulletin board there and then the week after is the 7th november 7th and that is when we have coffee for a cause and um, the proceeds go uh, to soul to soul where we um, try to provide money to buy shoes for some of the kids uh, in need and so that's always a good event to come out for uh, with shoes comes socks and so we're also doing it's october and we'll collect socks to uh, donate them to people in in need Today we're having our vital congregations uh, meeting following the service in the coffee hour room. It's week three, and this week we are uh, studying outward incarnational focus. Last week was, I forget all these marks, but last week was um, intentional authentic evangelism, and the first week is lifelong discipleship formation my my brain is getting old and so and and on top of that i still have covid brain and so it's it's remarkable that i am able to remember these three so i don't expect you all to remember them but it's always good to um, study these things because we are going to be going over them over and over again as we continue on with uh, vital congregation so intentional evangelism is authentic evangelism is two <laughs> lifelong discipleship formation is one and then this week is <laughs> i put myself on the spot all the time this week is outward incarnational focus out of the meeting um last week uh i'm gonna change things up last week you know well, oftentimes when it comes to the joys and concerns of the congregation a lot of times the concerns um, kind of take precedence and uh, that shouldn't necessarily be that throughout our weeks we have joys that we spy uh, during the week and so i thought we first think about the joys that we can share with one another the the thanksgiving that we could bring to god and so i open it up to the congregation are there any joys or thanksgivings that you have uh, from your week or that you're seeing yes the, the food bank is always a source of, of uh, joy and i and concern i guess too but and i i never get tired of talking about how god moves uh, when it comes to uh, feeding um, his uh, his lamb, and uh, I was thinking about the wonderful things that happened. We have a, a an original garage. You'd almost think the historical society has gotten their hooks into it because it's having trouble knocking it down. But the the mice have taken it over, so as far as a, a utility is concerned, it's not useful there. But make a long story short, we have volunteers who have come in and are working on. Uh, raising it from the inside out so that's just one of the joys that is happening at your local food bank thank you don always a joy to hear uh i would say success stories coming out of the food bank uh, now they have a garage that they are working on and uh, trying to take down to make more space for the food bank and it's a uh, the way the, the fact that they have to make more room for the food that they're bringing in is such good news because they have they're over they're overflowing my cup overflows and uh, the lord is indeed doing a, a tremendous amount of work through don and sharon and all the volunteers at the food bank so any other joys michael
so Michael's able to move forward on a project that he's been working on and Hayden's been able to um, have time with special friends. So we give thanks to God for those things. Any other joys? Yes, Jane. It's a blessing to have the beauty of fall and not having to uh, worry about the lawn so much. Anything else? Yes, Nikki. So harvest is winding down and uh, there's a lot of people uh, missing their, their uh, field workers. And so we give thanks for, for the blessings of that. Are there any concerns? Please keep uh, Tammy and her family in prayer as or her mom passed away on Friday. And so uh, please uh, pray for comfort and, and peace for them. Elaine. Can you share her first name? So first for LaDonna, um, who got COVID only 10 or so days on a job and is now in Portland on a ventilator. So please pray for healing for her. Delbert. Okay. Pray for a family friend, uh, Delbert. He passed away with can uh, from cancer, and uh, pray for for the family there. Any other joys or concerns? Yes. So prayers for Rob Hatfield. He's a and pray for did he pass or passed away? And prayers for comfort for for his family. So pray for uh, Bruce's family as he, he passed away. Anything else? Well, let us pray together. Lord, there are many things that we are thankful for. Many ways in which you have blessed us, the ways that you have sustained us, ways that you have opened opportunities, ways that you have shown us your beauty and creativity. We thank you for what, what you're doing in the food bank. Thank you for blessing them. Thank you for giving them 
uh, workers and space to expand and just all the food to fill that that space lord we give you thanks we thank you lord for uh, working in michael's life and, and enabling him to move forward on on a project that he's been working on or caden and uh, relationships that he has and uh, friends to to support him and, and time to spend with him we thank you, Lord, again for the, the, the beauty of this time. We thank you, Lord, that Jane doesn't have to worry so much about the lawn anymore. And we thank you for all the people who are working hard in the harvest. And we thank you, Lord, for uh, the blessings through the harvest and also for times winding down. We ask that you continue to bless families and bless workers that they may finish the job and, and enjoy the work that they have done. Along with the thanksgiving, we also have our concerns. And so we lift up Tammy and Daniel and Chelsea and, and her family to you, Lord, as uh, her mom passed away. We pray, Lord, that you would bring comfort to them. I pray that you would give them assurance knowing that um, she trusted in you and that uh, she is a way, uh, she has um, is, is free from the pain and, and suffering she endured, and she's enjoying uh, rest and eternity with you, Lord. So we give you thanks, and we uh, lift up prayers for, for, for Tammy. We pray for all those who are suffering from COVID, and we lift up uh, LaDonna to you. We pray that you would bring uh, healing into her life, that you give her, her strength um, as she's on the, the ventilator, that you'd Bring her to recovery, Lord, and, and, and that you would um, bring that healing, that miracle, um, that she may be able to breathe again and, and breathe, breathe, breathe freely, Lord. We pray for uh, the family of Delbert. We pray, Lord, that you would um, comfort them as he has passed away from cancer, that you would um, bring them um, a sense of peace and encouragement during this time. And we also pray for Bruce's family that as he has passed away, that you'd shine light into their darkness and they may be able to experience your love and grace even in this time of sadness. And we lift up uh, Rob's family to you as well that in their, their sorrow and in their, their mourning, Lord, that you would uh, bring about uh, comfort and they'd be able to experience joy in remembering his life. So we lift these prayers up to you. And we lift our joys up to you. Lord, we do come knowing that you are indeed good and that you bless us and that you uh, listen to our prayers. And so we lift these prayers all in the name of, of Jesus Christ, who taught us to, to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just a quick reminder, the offering box is in the back, or you can mail it in or give online. Thank you. Praise him. Praise Him from the heavens And praise Him In the heights up above And praise Him All of His angels And praise Him All of His heavenly Sun and moon, all of you shine. 
Sing the doxology with me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Was great. 
Please be seated, everyone. Today's scripture reading comes from Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 through 36. Luke 6, 27 through 36. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Luke 6. 27 through 36. And let us pray. Lord, I pray that as we have heard your word and as we dwell upon it and as we hear, uh, hear it proclaimed, that you would be stretching our hearts, that you would be expanding our capacity to love and expanding our circles of love so that we may include those who are difficult to love. So do that work of transformation within us, open our eyes to see uh, those who you call us to and see the opportunities to show mercy and love to those we come across. We pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. If you look at a map of the United States and all the states and their borders, you'll notice that uh, states have some understandable borders. The four corners of Utah, Arizona, Colorado, and New Mexico. Square corners, it makes sense. You would, like cutting up a cake, you would come up with, you know, corners like that. Even the borders of Washington are, are reasonable, with land borders being kind of straight, but then you have the Snake River and the Columbia River defining more borders, and then on the west side, you have the Pacific Ocean. Kind of straightforward, makes, kind of, makes sense. But for some states, the borders aren't so straightforward. They curve and they're wiggly, some weird op, outcroppings, maybe panhandles. A while ago on TV, on the History Channel, there was a show called How the States Got Their Shape that addresses the history behind some of the unusual state borders. In, in it, the hosts would talk about things like uh, access to water, uh, dealings in Congress, wars, and even mistakes by geological surveys. Because of various factors involved, some of these shapes, some of these states are oddly shaped. Human beings like to draw lines. They like to draw lines in the sand, so to speak. We divide countries, we divide states, counties, cities, neighborhoods, and down to individual property. Lines are important as they keep the peace between people. It denotes what land and resources belong to what people, 
whether it's water or minerals, oil, forests, etc. In agriculture, we know who owns what field and the borders of that field, so we don't go and plant and harvest in places that we don't belong. Siblings, and I'm not saying this is what my brother and I did, but siblings who share a room might be tempted to draw a line straight down the middle of the room to divide it up so they don't fight. You might have to do that with Isaiah and Jeremiah sometimes. So lines are a good thing. However, lines are a not so good thing when it promotes an us versus them mentality and spurs on aggressive competition and even hatred and animosity towards one another. As we look at the lines and borders around the country and around the world, we see how lines are used to create that us versus them. And oftentimes the thems are demonized to be our enemy. When I was younger, watching the presidential election, red and blue didn't mean much to me. I was just excited because, whoa, another, another state got, got colored in. It's like paint by numbers or something like that. However, in the past few elections, red and blue became more significant. Red and blue not only represented which president won that state, but also represented uh, which side that state was on. And more so this election, depending on what news outlet you listen, you watch, what social media you get on, or what politician you believe and listen to, they paint the state of the opposite color as the enemy. We can see the battle lines drawn across the country. Even across our own state, the cascade separates the blue side from the red side, and each side is depicted as sort of the enemy. Across the country and around the world, borders do develop that us versus them mentality in people. And the idea of them is often being manipulated to put them as the enemy of us. And instead of working together to come up with solutions to the problems we face, we fight and oppose the thems along every step of the way. Now this couldn't possibly happen in the church, could it? Unfortunately, the lines are also drawn in the church denominationally, non-denominationally, liberal, conservative, north, south, east coast, west coast, big church, small church, whatever the differences are, lines are drawn. When I was a pastor in South Dakota, I learned how early church planters from the various denominations set out to evangelize and plant churches in the Dakotas. The mission boards would gather together and they would draw boundaries and divide up where each denomination could set up shop. The Lutherans got this much of land, this, this section, the Presbyterians got another section, the Methodists and so on and so forth. They had limits to where, they, where each group could minister. And I'm supposed, I suppose that happened in other states and territory. It happened in global missions as well. And it also happens at the local church level. A congregation might feel like a certain neighborhood is theirs, or an outreach ministry or a particular event is theirs. Oftentimes lines are drawn between congregations that are meant for congregations to protect their sheep and to find where congregations can gather sheep from. But with all these borders and lines being drawn around the world, around the country, and even in the church. For the local church, the most important line is the threshold to the entrance. Those who come regularly, regularly on the inside of this line, who perhaps look the same, think the same, and believe the same are the us, while those on the outside of the line who may not look like, think, believe, and act the same as us are them. Evangelism is boiled down to seeing how many of them we can convert 
to us and stay on this side of the line instead of taking the grace of God that we experience on this side of the line and joyfully sow it on the outside of the line, regardless of whether or not them become us. But surely the them are not our enemies, right? We don't fight with them. We don't hate them. Right? In the weekly email this week, and by the way, if you don't get the e weekly email and you want to receive it, just give me your email address and I'll add you to, left, to the list. But anyway, in the weekly email, I did a little musing over this week's passage, thinking about the question, who is my enemy? Since Jesus tells us in this passage to love our enemies. Now, I don't believe I have a mortal enemy like a Darth Vader type person in my life. I also don't believe I have people as described in the passage today, people who hate me or curse me or abuse me. Maybe word hasn't gotten back to me about that, but I, last time I checked, I didn't have anyone who had the habit of stealing my stuff or slapping me on the cheek. So I push back a little in my mind and ask, who is my enemy? Kind of in the same vein that the, the lawyer asked Jesus, who is my neighbor in the parable of the Good Samaritan? At the end of the parable of the Good Samaritan, the neighbor to the one who was beaten and left to die on the side of the road was the one who showed him mercy, the Samaritan, the one who is supposed to be his enemy. Jesus encourages the lawyer to go and do likewise, meaning go and show mercy, just as the Samaritan showed mercy to the man on the side of the road. So how does this inform us who our enemy is? The Samaritan made the enemy his neighbor by showing him mercy. In that case, those whom we Sorry. In that case, those whom we withhold mercy, those we simply pass by on the other side of the road, we make our enemy. So Jesus tells us at the end of today's passage, be merciful just as your father is merciful. Paul reminds us that we were once enemies with God. God is the, is the ultimate them or holy other, as we have been separated by, uh, from God by sin. The line was drawn in the Garden of Eden when sin entered in, into the world, and that border was drawn to find us, to define us versus them or God. But cro God crossed over that border in coming himself to walk the earth, and God showed us mercy and grace through Jesus Christ going to the cross, dying and rising again. We remember from Romans, Romans 5, 8 says, but God proves his love for us in this, that while we, while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. And in verse 10, it says, for if we were enemies, for if while we were enemies, we were conceived, or let me start over. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. So God crossed that border and he brought us mercy grace, forgiveness, and love. Our goal, goal then, if we are going to try to love our enemies, is crossing the borders that we have set for ourselves. We have set for, yourself, for ourselves. My brain is just not working. 
So our goal, our goal then is we're going to love our enemies. It's to cross over that borders that we have set for ourselves and live out God's mercy and grace in how we speak and treat others who are not us. People we simply pass by every day so that they too can know Jesus as Lord. And so that they too can experience the love that we have going on in this church family. Or even experience the love of other churches, church families. As long as they are able to see and taste that the Lord is indeed good. And want to experience more of that in some faith community. And we do have a lot of love going on in our church family. Loving each other is good. But the thing is, love needs to extend outward, outside of ourselves. God is love. And God is community in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But there needed to be something outside of the Trinity to be recipients of God's love. And so God created humankind so that God can extend love in a caring relationship with something that is outside of himself. Even when humankind rebelled and hurt that relationship, God continued to reach out and love us, showing us time and time again mercy and grace. We are a community of love here in this congregation. We have a lot of love for one another. But that love needs a recipient outside of our community, outside of ourselves. Jesus says in verses 32 through 33, he says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Or if, uh, for even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. Even sinners do the same. We don't have to say sinners in there. But we could put any group, any community in there who are not sinners and get the same idea. Maybe people in the Rotary Club love and care for one another. Seniors in the Senior Center, center love and care for one another. Educators at school workers in the field, healthcare workers at the clinic. They all love those who love them. So what makes the church and the church family any different? We love and do good for one another. So what? Everyone else does. There's no difference if we keep that love inside the doors, behind the line of the front door. We are just like any other group that cares for one another. The difference comes when we cross over that line of the front door and embody Jesus Christ to our neighbors, our community, and even our enemies. Through our actions and through our words, we extend to them the love, mercy, and grace of Jesus Christ. We demonstrate the kingdom of God, a powerful, lasting alternative to what people outside of our front door are experiencing, especially those whom others would call enemies because they are on the fringe of society and they are passed by every single day. That embodiment of Christ in our community, that stepping out of the front door and looking for ways to engage the thems around us is what the third mark of congregational vitality is all about. Outward incarnational focus. It is outward 
because we're looking past the physical and social barriers of the church, getting outside the church walls. It is incarnational, meaning we are the body of Christ in the community, being the hands and feet to the people we meet. And it's our focus. We are done looking just after our own needs as a congregation, but looking outward and seeing the needs of the community and especially people's need for Jesus Christ. If we think our enemies, if we think that, if we think of our enemies as not those who want to hurt us, but as those we pass by day by day without being merciful as God our Father is merciful, we have a lot of loving to do. That's good because we do have a lot of share, a lot of love to share so that we look past the borders of this church and look for those opportunities to love our neighbors as well as our enemies. So let us look at people not as them, but as people who need to know Jesus Christ and the love and mercy and grace he offers. Please pray with me. Lord, I thank you that you have filled this place with your love. I thank you that you have given us a church family that we could uh, live life together with, that we could experience your kingdom, and that you continue to fill this place with your love and mercy and grace. Help us, Lord, not to keep that within our walls. Help us, Lord, to cross over the border that we have set and bring that out into the community. Help us to see the people that we pass by day by day. And help us, Lord, to extend mercy, to show love, and to, inv and to invite them into that relationship with Christ Jesus, our Lord. Stir within us, Lord, your love and your grace. Help us to love our enemies and our neighbors, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. You are God of this city. You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are, you're the light in the darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are, there is no one like our God, there is no one like you God. have yet to come, and better things have still to be done in this city. The creator of all things, you're the king above all kings, you are, you're the strength and the weakness, you're the love to the broken, you're the joy and the sadness, you are, there is no one like our God. Yes. 
still to be done in this city. Where glory shines from heart to life with praise for you and a love for you in this I do believe that God has greater things for Othello. And it takes us to cross the border and to share that love that he has blessed us with, with the people around us. And so go forth this week, cross some borders, sow those seeds of love, and invite into the love and grace that we have with Christ Jesus, our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Have a good week, everyone.